You're watching the Totally Outrageous Tina Lore Marathon. Stay tuned for another episode. Is also a Buchanan. The Sanders, they hate the Buchanan family. I don't know, who knows? We're dealing with really sick, desperate minds here. We just, we, we have to find these people before it's too late for Cord and Tina. Wait a minute here. We? Are you telling me you're going to Atlantic City with the police? Yeah, you bet. Well, then I'm going with you. Justice, they want blood. No, my blood. They're never gonna kill me. I can't remember the last time I've done this much harm. It's a good thing you rigged up the electric chair. <laughs> I demand silence in the courtroom. We're wasting time. The jury has spoken. Let's get on with the punishment. Yeah. Oh, quiet. It is the responsibility of the jury to render a verdict on the guilt or innocence of the defendant. However, it is the responsibility of the judge to pass sentence. Will the defendant please step forward? to live brought to you by new improved hunts ketchup the great taste in ketchup to Just like he promised, it arrived yesterday. It'll move as soon as you call for it. Well, uh, I guess you better talk to the gang. Not yet. There's some business I want to take care of first. Oh, good luck. I'm getting out of here. It's getting a little hot for me. Oh, uh, here's a telephone number from the pilot. Call him. He's waiting for you. Thanks, Perry. Each of us has faced a jury of his peers. And each of us has become a victim of the travesty that passes for justice in this country. Each of us has begged for mercy, and each has been denied even a semblance of mercy. Yeah, she's right. I was railroaded into Statesville. Honey, that's what they're going to try to do to me, only I won't have the luxury of Statesville. I said silence, please. Now, bearing in mind the pain and injustice we all have suffered, Today, we have the opportunity for a great victory. A victory for justice. Yeah! 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 Uh, the Sanders family has a long tradition of being gracious in victory. That is what sets us apart from the likes of the Buchanans. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I were to sentence the defendant to death, I would simply be committing the same crime that society has committed on all of us. So, I ask you to join me in granting Tina the mercy which we were denied. I order that Tina and Cord be locked in the arena until we all have made our escape. She's getting off. That's not fair. She's guilty. Ursula, you have been convicted of a number of crimes to which you have confessed, and yet you believe it was unfair to sentence you to a life in Statesville. You 
ask forgiveness, a chance to redeem yourself. Now, how can you, how can you not permit that same chance to Tina? She's right, Ursula. If we'd have had judges like Granny, a lot of us have been on probation right now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ursula, you will soon be a member of the Sanders family. It is mercy and forgiveness that we uh, treasure most, uh, except for love, of course. All right, let's hear it for Granny! Yeah! 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 Oh, honey, I can't believe it. I thought they were going to kill me. She's not the final judge, Titan. There is no way that Tina is going to leave here vertically. Thanks, Karen. No word? No, no word, no nothing, just... Honey, well, why don't you just go in back to the center and you can concentrate on your work there? Oh, thank you. And let you walk into a building of convicts by yourself? No, I wouldn't get any work done anyway. You know, I'm really surprised that Vicky and Clinton are on a plane heading back to Landview by now. Well, maybe they would be if uh, they knew about oh, this. Oh, you're not going to tell them, is that it? No, I'm not going to tell them until I at least have some definite information. All I can do now is worry. Well, I'm not going to sit around and worry because I have to keep an eye on you now. Uh, no, <laughs> you've had enough trauma to last you three lifetimes. I'm not going to let you get involved in this. Mm -hmm. Who knows, all hell could break loose when the police storm in and finally find these guys. All the more reason for me to go. I have to make sure you don't do anything foolish. Mm -hmm. All right, we got, well, so, excuse me. Hello, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Anything? No, no, nothing. No phone calls, no uh, demands for ransom. No, no, if Jamie uh, needed money, he would have called by now. Whoever set him up in Atlantic City must be setting him up with the getaway funds. Have the police found any connection between Jamie and the rest of the people in Atlantic City? They're still working on it, Sarah. We, we do think that we've narrowed down possible hideout locations. Has to be an empty building, has to be big enough to accommodate at least two dozen people or 15 convicts still unaccounted. Herb, what is it that makes you think all the convicts are in the same place? Well, Neil, according to Neil Delaney, Jamie and Elizabeth and Ursula had a safe haven, so the others must have followed them there. So, you're looking for, like, an empty warehouse? Yeah, something? not too many of them, so... Come in. Are you Mr. Callison? Yes. I'm sorry to bother you, but your secretary told me Captain Garrett sent in a meeting. She wanted me to wait, but I wanted to speak to you immediately. You see, I know something about the escaped convicts. Michael had just lost Alicia. All he had left was their son. So out of some misguided sense of love, you decided to play God with another woman's child? I was keeping my promise to Alicia. Look, we had all convinced ourselves that Garrick was going to pull through. She was much more worried about Michael before she died. She made me promise that I would do everything in my power to keep him from despair. Oh, darling, whenever anyone loses a child or a partner in life, they always act that way, as if, as if life weren't really worth living anymore. But Michael, he seems like such a strong man. You weren't there. You didn't see him. He was on the verge of suicide. Darling, Michael Grant hardly seems like the sort of man who'd kill himself. Oh, yeah? Well, you don't know him the way I do. He was convinced that he had absolutely no reason to live. I made him promise to put his son's needs before everything else. I convinced him that Garrick was the reason for him to live. Yes. And then I went back to the nursery to be with Garrick. Is that when it happened? I walked in and I saw that monitor go black. And I yelled for help, and I screamed for help, and nobody responded. And I knew in that instant that that flat line, not only did it represent that Carrick was dead, but that Michael would die, too. Yes. So you decided to take matters into your own hands. There was nothing we could do to save Carrick. He was dead. But there was still time to save Michael. I know, darling, but didn't you understand? You are just exchanging Brenda's happiness for Michael. Oh! If I had been thinking, I never would have done any of this in the first place. But I wasn't. I was acting totally off emotions, and I saw, I saw a way to protect the man I love, and I took it. I mean, how did you get away with it? What about the hospital's, uh, their protection for newborn babies? I mean... <laughs> Gabrielle, tell me. I swear, I swear.
match the baby's footprints on the medical records. Mm. And Brenda refused to let them do an autopsy on her baby. So Garrick died and was buried as Stephen McGillis. God rest his soul. God, please protect mine for trying to help Michael. There you are. There's the whole wretched truth. Is it? I bear my entire soul to you, and you were calling me a liar? No. No, I'm not calling you a liar. I'm su suggesting that you're only telling me half the truth. You see, everything you've said so far seems to make me believe that you did all this to protect Michael. I did do all this to protect him. No, Gabrielle. I think you had another motive. A much more important one. All right, Mother. What exactly are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that you switch the babies for your own happiness. Why? I already have a son of my own. I didn't need a baby the way Michael needed a baby. Max has custody of Al. Yes, that's right. But I can spend time with him. I can share in his life. Michael had just lost his wife and his son. He still had you. <laughs> he needed his own flesh and blood to, to stop him from going over the edge. And Brenda, though it was difficult, she was coming to terms with her loss. She had plans to get married to Larry and have other children. Oh, and then everything would be right with her no. world. No. But she would be happy. Then she started spending time with Garrick. Do you think that Brenda knew that Garrick was her son right from the beginning? Oh, yes, it's possible. They certainly shared a very strong bond from the beginning. Which you tried to discourage. But wouldn't you? I'm sorry. something so wrong, so horribly wrong, and all the justification in the world is not going to excuse it. But you want me to. No. No. I'm stating the facts because I can't go on living like this any longer. Do you think that Brenda will continue to pursue the truth? Of course she will, especially now that Max is on her side. How are you so sure that she's won Max over? Max has gone to extraordinary lengths trying to get me to confess. But I denied everything. I even told him that I was going to sue him and Brenda for slander. But he knows the truth. He's even got a storyline on Fraternity Row all about this. What's Fraternity Row? It's a soap opera. He's the co-producer. And he's relentless. He isn't going to give up until he exposes my deception and buries me with it, both publicly and privately. Oh, Mommy. Don't you see, I have caused too much pain. And now I don't want you and Deborah to be humiliated along with me, so would you please? I want you to call the airlines and get a flight back to London this afternoon. No, Gabrielle. Yes, Mother, there isn't going to be a wedding. You don't need to be here. And Lord knows I don't want you here when I tell Michael the truth. You can just wipe those smiles off your faces. Just because Granny saved you from death right now doesn't mean you're going to like at all what's in store for you next. What are you talking about? You just better back off, punk. Punk? Yeah, that's Hey, right. hey, hey! Judge told me to take you back to your cells, all right? So let's go. Come on. Go. Come on. Move it. Rams, you are a sly fox. I managed to defuse a very dangerous situation for which you should be extremely grateful. I am, but you know damn well that Cord and Tina are going to go up in a blast of smoke when we make our escape. You tell Ursula, stay away from that bomb. Rams, that's our plan. We take off in the helicopter, the others take off on foot, except for Cord and Tina. The place goes up in flames, the police believe that we're part of the ashes, and we're home free. Well, I am changing the plan. There is absolutely no way all these convicts can escape with their lives. 
There's been enough pain, enough death. I will not tolerate any more violence. Rams. And that, I mean it. No more arguments. Either we do it my way, or I'm leaving here now. You can't leave without me. You'd be picked up in no time by the police, and they'd haul you back off to Statesville. I don't care. I have enough murders on my conscience. Okay. All right. You win. I hope you're not just saying that to placate me. Don't worry. You have my word. Perry says that the cops are moving in. I've got the uh, helicopter pilot's number. I'll give him a call and tell him to meet us here at 1 o'clock sharp. So be ready. Cheney, what about Ursula? Just steer clear of her. I don't want her hanging around when the helicopter gets here. It's just going to be you, me, and the jewels. Besides, she'll need time to be able to accept your decision not to kill Tina. I'm just wondering if she is capable of accepting it. No kidding, Titan. I really believe this is one of my most brilliant efforts. If the judge said Tina shouldn't die. Yeah, well, if Tina killed your father, wouldn't you want to see her punished? Okay, then, so stop feeling guilty and help me here with this. Do you... What are you doing here? I was just taking a shortcut. Did you read? No, just Wait a second. Did you build this? This is brilliant. You're a genius. You know, if that old witch would have sentenced Tina to death, this would have been the perfect way to do her. I mean, you're not still thinking about killing her, are you? Oh, man, that is beautiful. This, look, I want to be in on this, all right? No way. Oh, please, look. Elizabeth let Tina off the hook because the rich stick with the rich. They don't care what we want. Look, all they are is a bunch of selfish, greedy pigs. I mean, you really believe that Tina should die? Absolutely. Look, please, I really want in on this. Oh, well, we could use an extra hand. But you have to promise not to let Jamie and Elizabeth know what we're up to. I swear it. Let's go get caught in Tina. But remember, be very careful. You've lived with the deception for all this time. You can live with it for a little bit longer. Are you trying to protect me? Yes, I am. You're my daughter, and despite, despite the differences over the years, I love you. I can't condone what you've done. I think it's horrific. But what's done is done. Fortunately, I think there is some way we can salvage the situation. Listen to me, I'm finished. Why do you want to prolong everyone's agony, including mine? Just a week, perhaps two. A week or two? I don't even have days. Did you hear what I said? Max and Brenda are closing in on the truth. I've got to do something now. I can't keep living on the edge like this. I can't even keep my lies straight. I cannot go on pretending. Listen, your impulsive behavior got you into this fix in the first place. Now, do not act impulsively now. I've got to tell Michael the truth, Mother. Please, he, he just can't hear it from Max or Brenda. I owe him that much. Look, if Max and Brenda were so sure that they knew the truth, why would they be so anxious to get a confession out of you? I mean, why would Brenda be so anxious to get a blood sample? Because she wants her son. And she will eventually find the truth that she needs. And is a blood sample the only way they can actually prove that he's her son? I, I think so. Well, who else knows about Garrick? I mean, besides Brenda and Max. That doesn't matter. It does, you tell me. All right. Tina Roberts. Is she threatening to expose you? Is she working with Brenda and Max? No. Fine. Then my plan is going to work. Now, you listen to me. And you trust me. You've got to convince Michael to push this wedding date up. Do you understand? Then, then, you tell him the truth about little Garrick. You saw this man at Grandview last night? Yes, sir. Where exactly did you see him? He was in the drawing room when I walked in. He told me his name was Lorenzo and that he worked for Michael. I had no reason to suspect him. My mother and I had just arrived and we hadn't met anyone else on the staff. But when I saw his face on yes, the front of... What was he doing? Um, he said he was checking to see that everything was safe before he retired for the night. We had a chat and then he left. Did he seem nervous, uneasy? No. Actually, he was charming. 
But if I'd known his history, I, I might have been nervous or screamed or something. Yes, did you tell your sister or Michael about this? I told Gabrielle she was rather upset that someone had gained access to the house and passed himself off as a staff member. I described him to her, and she didn't recognize him as anyone that she knew. Mm. Did you come down and look at mugshots? Mugshots? Yeah, uh, photographs of possible suspects. Oh, I didn't talk to the police. Gabrielle said she'd take care of everything. What do you think that um, he was after? Jewelry, money. When I told Gabby that he'd been standing by a painting, she said that's where Michael's safe was. Anything missing? I don't know. You have to ask Gabrielle. So what do you make of this? Herb, if Blade's a burglar, he's after some jewels, and why hit here? Why not Atlantic City? Why not some other place that might be closer to it than Landview, huh? Well, I don't, I'm familiar with the town. I could explain. I feel so naive. I feel terrible about letting him get away. No, no. Not your fault. Uh, but you said that you chatted for a bit. What did you talk about? Um, we talked about the grounds at Grandview. Um, he told me he was the caretaker. And ballet. He was amazed I was starting to be a professional dancer. <laughs> I'm amazed I even know what the ballet is. <laughs> he did say the closest he'd got to ballet lately was wrestling. Uh, wrestling. Wrestling? Yes. That's it? What's it? There's an abandoned wrestling arena right there. Would you mind repeating your story for Captain Garrett, sir? No, not at all. How you doing, huh? Feeling any better? Honey, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry about all this. And you know what, honey? Elizabeth is going to be in my prayers Every day from now on. I mean, if she hadn't spoken up for me. Look, honey, I... No, and when we get out of this whole mess, you know, we have to find a way to talk to her, to get him to do something for her. Honey, you got to realize that half of the convicts out there were totally against Elizabeth's decision. I mean, we could still be in some serious trouble here. What, and they'd go against her? No. Honey, those are dangerous criminals, all right? And they've been cooped up in there. They are bored to tears. And if you haven't noticed, we are their entertainment. She's not going to let them hurt us. As long as she's here, she's not. But honey, Jamie is not going to stay here forever. I really get the impression that he's going to be splitting out of here real soon. And I know he's not going to take all those convicts with him. Well, he's not going to leave without the emerald. You saw him talking to that Perry guy. Maybe he was telling him just now that, that they found the emerald. But that's impossible. I... How can you be so sure of that, Tina? Well, because, uh... If, if he knew where it was, then he'd already have it by now. Listen, my gut is telling me that they're going to hightail it out of here any second. No. Honey, you know if they're getting out of here? You know, the only reason they'd be doing that, honey, is because... Because maybe... Maybe they're afraid they're going to get caught. Maybe Perry was telling Jamie that the cops are onto them and they're on their way. Honey, that would be nice, but I don't think we can put all our eggs in that basket. Oh, honey, I think we're going to be... We're going to be home no. in time for dinner tonight. We are. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell our son just how wonderful his daddy is. And how, how, you, how you made such a wonderful lawyer. Oh, and, yeah. and how you made such a handsome wrestler because you were handsome through the whole thing. You really were. Oh, isn't that sweet? So sorry to interrupt. You can't just barge in here like this. All right, let's get moving out of here. What are you talking about? Where are we going? We're going back to the arena. Why? Because we said so. Wait a minute, I'm not going anywhere until I talk to Elizabeth. Just shut your face and let's get out the door. Right? I'm not moving until you get Elizabeth down oh, here. Oh, come on, we're wasting time. Just gag them so they can't scream and alert the others. What are you talking about, alert the others? Look, if they don't know we're going up to the arena, what's going on here? Help! 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 We can deal with that as soon as the crew gets back from lunch. Thanks. I've been calling all over for you. Where you been? Well, when I got back from Grandview... Well, well, I, what I, were you doing at Grandview? I went to see my baby. Brenda, Brenda, I said, please, do not do anything foolish. It was so perfect. It was a risk I had to take. I went in there and I tried to get some blood from the baby, what but I swear that Gabrielle is like your radar or something. The minute I get around Stephen... 
Just as I was getting ready to take blood from the child, she puts her hand on my shoulder. Oh, God, you didn't, Brenda. I have a friend who is a lab technician in Philadelphia. He has agreed to run the test for me, but he needs my blood, and he needs a sample of the baby's blood. It is so perfect. And then I foul everything up. Brenda, did anyone besides Gabrielle see you? Michael saw. Oh. We got into an argument, Please. and he and some woman came into the room. You were lucky you didn't get arrested. He told me to get out of the house. And he told me that I couldn't see his son anymore. That is my son, Max. That is my baby, and I want him back. Brenda, Brenda, come on. We are going to get your baby back, but you got to give me more time to put my plan into effect. Oh, my plan isn't going to work. Michael isn't going to listen to a word you say or anybody else. He thinks I'm out of my, my mind. So there's just one thing left to do. Will you help me kidnap Stephen? What you're asking me to do is as awful as what I've already done. All I'm asking you to do is protect yourself by tricking Michael into marrying me. God, no! Haven't I caused him enough pain already? Now, one more deception isn't going to make any difference to Michael now. It makes a difference to me, or does that not matter? Oh, yes, it does make a difference to you. If you do this, you will be a girl who is alone and single in Landview without the grand name and fortune behind you. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, I should have known. I should have known that money was at the root of your plan. <laughs> Stupid of me to think that you actually cared what happened to me when the only thing you ever cared about is your bloody bank account. You know, it takes a great deal of money for a woman alone to bring up two daughters, and I've always done very well, and I have no fears about my future. But of course you don't. That's why you got on the first flight out of London as soon as you heard I was engaged to a millionaire. Gabrielle, yeah, you don't seem to understand the situation. If you confess, not only will you bring down all the scorn and hatred of everybody in Landview upon yourself, but you're also risking a prison sentence. Max told me that if I gave Brenda the baby, that he would make certain that I wouldn't go to jail. Oh, Max. Max also promised you joint custody of Alan. Look where that got you. I mean, do you have the money for your own self-defense? I mean, do you have the money to settle somewhere else if your defense works? I will get a job. Oh, on what? Michael Grand's Would recommendation? You stop it! I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to live. But I, I love, I love Michael, and I can't keep on deceiving him. This moment. Darling, it seems as if Michael loves you very much as well. Perhaps after you're married, if you tell him the truth then, he's going to find it in his heart to forgive you. I doubt that. Well, you know you'd better risk it. Because you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. I can't lie in his arms. Pretend nothing is wrong. While all the time Brenda is desperate to be with her baby. I am very well aware of Brenda's plight. I feel terrible for her, but you mustn't confess now. You've got to marry Michael first. And the sooner the better. Convince him to elope. Yes, and then afterwards tell him whatever you like without possibly destroying your entire future. Review committee, and we decided that you should die. I'm not sure she's gonna have your head, so she finds the way you're up to. Let me go! Well, she won't find out. Not until it's too late. Tighten those straps. Help! Help! Call my help! Help! Tell Michael that I've gone mad, that I'm asking for an enormous wedding with guests and a big reception. Say anything. You've got to convince him to elope. It's your only recourse. Mother, I've already approached him on moving the wedding date forward. He's not against that idea. Well, when did you broach that subject? When Max threatened to expose me. 
So you see, you had this idea long before I did, darling. Well, the moment that Brenda wanted to take blood from Garrick, everything changed. Well, of course, it made your situation much more desperate. Now, you've got to marry Michael, and as quickly as possible. Thank you, oh, no. Stay calm. Oh, I am terribly sorry about the scene in the nursery. Oh, no, darling, it was really all my fault. No, you have every reason to protect Garrick. Once we are married and the adoption papers are complete, he'll be your son as well as mine. Michael, I want to talk to no, you. No, no, if I had listened to you instead of being so damn stubborn about Brenda's visits to Garrick, none of this would have happened. Yes, Gabrielle's been telling me that Brenda's become awfully possessive lately. Yes, I'm afraid my feelings of pity for her clouded my judgment. It's understandable. I certainly do sympathize with her loss. Well, I thought she was handling everything rather well. Uh, but apparently, as Gabrielle suspected, it was a ploy to get near Garrick. I'm going to have to make sure that Larry Wallach gets her the psychiatric care she needs. No, no. Well, I'm not going to banish her from Grandview and then just forget about her. I don't think she is capable even of realizing how ill she is. Her belief that Garrick is her son is frightening. She's a danger to him, and she might even be a danger to herself. Michael, I don't think Brenda's dangerous. She's... Well, now, you're going to defend her now after after what just happened? Uh, well, uh, after losing custody of Al, I'm, I'm sure Gabrielle's terribly sensitive to Brenda's feelings. But I, I think that both of you, at the moment, ought to concentrate on something good, like your wedding, and let Brenda look after herself for a while. I agree with Julia. How about you? Of course she agrees, don't you, darling? <laughs> Would you do mind if I went up to look at the baby? Not at all. Mother, thank you. So, Larry will see that Brenda gets the help that she needs, and if there's anything that you and I can do, we will do it. Now, in the meantime, I think that the future Mr. and Mrs. Michael Grand deserves some happiness, hmm? minutes to alone before they meet their maker. They don't deserve anything at all. Look, just give them two minutes to say their goodbyes, all right? Patrick and I never had any time to say goodbyes. Look, why don't you show them that you're a bigger person than they are, right? Come on. What's a couple minutes? What if Cord finds a way to set her free? So, you want to check his ropes yourself? There's no way he's getting out of here. Oh, come on. I don't like this. We'll be right back, folks. I'm trying to get my hands loose. There's not going to be enough time. Stop that, girl. Come on. Don't give up. Ow. Oh. When you said the cops could be on their way. Honey, I love you more than anything in this whole world. I do, and I, I'm so grateful to you for everything you've ever done for me. And I love CJ, and I, I want you to tell him that I love him and that I miss him, all right? And if you find somebody else that you love, that's okay, just as long as they're good honey, to you. You're not going to die, Tina. But, Come on. Honey, I can't die with the secret I've been keeping from you. Girl, whatever that is, it doesn't matter anymore. Honey, it's Brenda. Honey, please, you, you've got to beg her forgiveness for Stephen. Please just tell her that for me, okay? Hello, a final kiss to your wifey cord. But don't worry, you'll meet again in hell. Oh, we agreed to an equal relationship, 50-50. Unless there's something dangerous involved. If there's any danger, then I make the decision, and I already have. You stay. You know, sometimes I cannot believe how old-fashioned you are. I don't care. Maybe I am. I almost lost you once already because of Austin. Now, I'm not going to let you get anywhere near this Jamie Sanders or Ursula Blackwell. There's no telling what these people might do. Oh, but it's all right if I lose you. Look, trust me, I'm not out to win any medals for valor. Besides that, I'm going to be home for supper. You can count on me. We'll slap a couple of steaks on the old grill. I'll tell you everything that happened. Hey, 
You know, you think that you can just put your arms around me and everything's gonna be fine. I'm just gonna melt. Is it working? Hmm? A little bit. Would you please be careful? Look, I've already booked a hall for our 50th wedding anniversary. So don't you worry, okay? I'll call you in a couple hours. I'll see you in a couple hours. I'll be right back. Brenda, I know you're feeling desperate and alone, and you are frantic to get your baby back, but kidnapping won't solve anything. Max! It's the only way. It's the way you're gonna get yourself put in jail. It doesn't matter just as long as I get those blood samples to Philadelphia first. Oh, what good is it do gonna pr to prove that the boy is your son if you're spending the next 15 years behind bars? Don't you see? If I get that blood sample run, I will know that that is my child. And when that is proven, if I'm in jail, they'll get me out and they'll put Gabrielle in the slammer for the rest of her wretched life, which is where she belongs. If you take that boy from Grandview, the cops and the courts are not going to give a damn what your reason for taking the kid is. It's called kidnapping. What if, what if you get caught before you even get the blood sample? What uh, then? I'm not going to get caught, Max. Brenda, Gabrielle's not going to let you within 200 yards of that kid. Will you please just give my plan a chance? Gabrielle is not going to confess that she switched those babies because you are putting her story on your soap opera, Max. Face that. But it might get Michael thinking. I called him. I told him to watch the show. If he starts talking with Gabrielle, discussing it with her, he might notice how she's a bit anxious, nervous, guilty. This could be the thing that turns it around for us. But what if it doesn't happen? Then I honestly don't know. We just have to pray that this triggers the response that we're hoping for. If you're going to tell me that you've changed your mind about marrying me, you can forget it. I was rocking Garrick to sleep the other night, and I promised him that the three of us are going to have a great life together, and I can't go back on my word. And if it is the adoption papers that you're worried about, you can forget it. Because I talked to the lawyer, and he said the judge signs the papers, and then once we're married, everything is official. So that is good news. Let's... let's have a smile. <laughs> well, that's a little better. Tell me, what, uh... What mischief have you and your mother been up to already? Remember, I, I made a suggestion that we fly to Milan and get married as soon as possible. Yes, but since your mother's here now, that's not going to be necessary. Oh, oh, okay. You're uh, not having much success patching things up, right? No, we've, uh, we've come to an understanding. Then why run off to Milan? Because I want to be married to you as soon as possible. Why? you have the benefits of marriage? You don't have the marriage certificate. <laughs> Didn't you say very, very recently that it was unnecessary to make an honest woman out of you? Or did I dream that? Don't tease me. This is so important to me. It's important to me, too. I want to make you as happy as you've made me. Are you going to Milan? Ah. <sighs> How about a family wedding here at Grandview next week. Is that soon enough for you? Next week? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> 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 Excuse me, Mr. Grant. Yes, Martin. I'm sorry for the interruption, but you wanted me to remind you about the soap opera. The soap opera? Oh, yes, thanks, Martin. Yeah, I, I told Max I would watch Fraternity Row today. Why? He said he's going to do a promo for the hotel. I'll just catch a few minutes of it so that I can thank him properly. Look at this. <laughs> Max and Bo have hired Spring Sky. I can get a tape from, from Max. Really, we don't need to be looking at this. We've got so much to do if we're going to be getting married next week. Oh, no, no. Wait, wait, wait a minute. I, I want to see this. Now, the only sad note of this whole occasion is that my father can't be here to enjoy this with us. <laughs> you light up my life. Hey, look, 
I just want to check this strap one more time, okay? No, come on. I don't want to fall out of I don't want to fall out of the chair. I want you zap her, okay? All right. in her whole life. Please, don't do this. I, I'm not begging you. Take me instead. Oh, Put me in a chair. Say goodbye. Ursula, come on, please. Tina! 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 Tomorrow, following a man called Hawk, the MI force drives a wedge between a big wig and his bodyguard to break a blackmail ring on Mission Impossible. Then on Primetime Live with Diane Sawyer and Sam Donaldson, Yankee owner George Steinbrenner. Everybody knows.